and I am live. Let's see if anybody tunes in. Got a few watches on the table to share with you guys. Unfortunately, a lot of them are not running. It's the problem with having so many automatic watches is you can never keep them all running. Uh, see, Tuxedo Manor's here, Craig G's here, Bean Boy's here. What is today's the 22nd? Rock the Watch is here. Ken is checking in from Pittsburgh. Tennessee Mike is chiming in. Dirk is here on the West Coast. Will Carey's checking in. Thank you. I think Will's on a trip, actually. Parker's here. Brave Sailor's here. Floridian. Bobby Legs is checking in. Nate Dog is here. David checking in from Australia. Cardona's here, Pablo. I have one of your watches on the table. You might recognize that. Larry C is here. Mitch Maddock is here. I'm trying to set a watch. I said I was going to send this watch out to a buddy. Then I'm like, I need to do it. Uh, let's see, Kevin Hawthorne's here. Cowboy Swami's checking in. Sometimes at about eight oh four ish, something like that. Let's see, read a couple comments here. Ginger Down Under checking in from Australia. Stewart's here. Offhand Air Gunners here. See today. See what you guys all wore today. Mark is checking in. Mark has been working with me on a uh, random Rob Discord watch meetup. So big thanks to Mark for helping me out. Well, helping heck doing it all. But this is the watch I wore today. Is my white dial, forty-two millimeter Breitling Super Ocean. Absolutely love the Breitling Super Oceans. I have two of them. And honestly, if Breitling were to do a yellow dial in a uh, 42 millimeter, I'd buy that too. AZ Taz checking in from Arizona. Let's see, Steel stays in the house, currently wearing his beautiful Breitling Super Ocean 42 in blue. So Steel agrees with me. He's got the 42 millimeter blue variant of the Super Ocean, loves it. I didn't do a heavy pour, I have a little bit. It's, this is a uh, monkey shoulder. It was a gift from my buddy, Tennessee Mike. Thank you, Mike, still working on that. Henry checking in from Memphis. I just set the time and popped the Tudor Pelly on wrist, but I am gonna ship this out to my buddy for him to check out. Cause it's hard to check out some of these watches, you know? So it's nice to have good friends in the community. Tom for watches is wearing the Speedy again, awesome. Rodney Harris checking in. Derek wants to know what the salmon dial one is. Check this out. This is a Mont Blanc. There you go. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And an insane case bag. This is from their Heritage line. Spike checking in from Germany. Mr. JJ wearing a, a GA2100 modded. Well, it depends on how modded. I have one GA2100 here that is, I guess, technically modded because it has loomed indexes in this guy. So that one is technically modded. But I have a few other 2100s. Great watches, great model. Anise checking in. Austin, Texas for Steven. Yeah, the Mont Blanc is uh, awesome, and it's a little bit larger size, too, so I think it would work even on my wrist. Got a little something on the crystal there. But this watch was sent in by MM10. He's in my Discord, Michael. And I'm going to do the video review on it, and then it's going to get put on the auction block. So this will probably be... I'm hoping to do a Sunday fun day sale next Sunday. So if you guys aren't in the Discord, the the watches I'm going to list have already been listed on Discord. No one bought them. 
So I'm going to list them to the, the general public. You're going to see like the Mont Blanc. You're going to see a big eye, a long jean big eye. If, if I was flush with cash, as, as bad as this sounds, I would pick up this big eye. I would have both the stainless steel and the titanium one. That's how awesome this watch is to me. Cowboy Swami with the $5 here super chat has a question. Hey, Rob, thoughts on Decla? Seeing one with the hardened steel at 1500 Vickers with a Salita SW200 German made for $930, more than half of more than half of the 856. Um, so, yeah, Decla is not going to carry the – it's weird, right? And I, I don't know all of the history on the Decla, but Decla is not going to carry the, the brand recognition per se that – Zen or Damasco is going to carry, but honestly, uh, nothing against Zen. I like Zen watches, but I would strongly consider Decla and Damasco over Zen. Like those Decla watches, you can get crazy with them, with customizing them, or you know, however you want to do it. And they have a pretty good lineup. They look to be amazing watches. So if you're looking heavily at the Decla. My concern with Decla would be the resale value. So if you're buying brand new, which I think at that price, I don't think that's brand new, is it? Um, yeah, if you're a serial flipper, uh, I don't know. You got to be careful. I would be slightly concerned about that. Guys, check out this tuna that Pablo sent over. He sent over actually a few watches. I have a couple of Orients in the background too that are... Uh, water resistance on the big eye is like 30 meters. I don't even think it's 50. It might only be, uh, does it say? It just says, is that three bar or five bar? It's really small. I can't see it. Where's my glasses? I think I finally hit the age where I kind of need readers, guys. It's three bar, so it's, it's 30 meters. So basically, don't really get them wet. I mean, I've done some dishes with my uh, titanium one, and I'm not really worried about it. I'm more worried about getting the leather all messed up. But, yeah, I wouldn't get it too wet. Um, the Yeah, this is the big boy tuna, and I have to say it's crazy. This is limited edition. They only made 1,200 of them. Number 387 on this. Full titanium monocoque case, 1,000-meter diver, insane loom. It's using the 7C46 movement that you see in some of the smaller ones. Yeah, Kevin, it is. You're right. It's kind of like the James Cameron Seiko Tuna because it it has that uh, transition from the dark blue to almost the black. What a I mean, what a beautiful tuna, guys. I mean, it is a large watch, but it's so lightweight. It's, it's just amazing. Again, if I were flush with cash for the uh, watch budget, I would pick this up in a heartbeat because these are – it's a special watch. No kidding about it. So whoever whoever picks this up is going to be, yeah, is going to be a very lucky person. Mr. JJ says he has number 499 of that tuna. Awesome. How much is it, Sean? I, I don't know. You'll have to stay tuned. I don't really have a price structure set up for it yet. Um, and actually, I don't know if Pablo said he was keeping that one because he sent three watches and then he he messaged me after. If he's still in the chat, he'll, he'll let me know. But because he sent the, the M-Force, and he sent the Orient Star, and he sent that tuna. I think he said he was going to keep that tuna. I can't remember. Uh, let's see. Sean with a $10 here super chat says, want a leather strap watch, um, sub 3,500 range, like the Globemaster, Aquaterra, etc., but too pricey. Mont Blanc Heritage seems nice, but uh, tall for a 50 millimeter in your 38 to 40. Um, I, I've been really like digging the Longines lineup, Sean. Take a look at some of the Longines. Uh, I know some of them have the longer lug to lug. I don't know. What'd you say your wrist size was? Uh, seven inch wrist. You could definitely pull off a big eye, but if you're not into a chronograph, you could definitely pull off the sector dial that Longines makes. But here's a now, this is a bronze one, but I think you can get the Heritage, Heritage Diver in a non-bronze, but it's going to have the longer lug-to-lug -lug as well. So that's where I would probably gear you towards the sector dial. But there are some other – yeah, it's pretty long lug-to-lug. -lug. It's a really long lug-to-lug, -lug actually. Um, yeah, I've been really digging with the Longines lineup. It's, it's hard to beat 
the value that you get with them. And you're getting that Swiss movement, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, I'll have to think. And if anybody else wants to chime in in the in the comments with other alternatives in that $3,500 range, just a really good sporty watch, a little bit smaller. Uh, yeah, you could do the Frederic Constant High Life. That would be a really good one too. You have integrated bracelets. You can do, uh, and it comes with the extra strap. That would be a fun one. Kevin S. is suggesting a Grand Seiko. Uh, if you're end user, I would say fine, but otherwise I'm not a huge um, promoter of Grand Seiko, to be honest with you. So I did just unbox. This is, it just launched today. Actually, yeah, uh, maybe try your luck at this. I mean, the, the, listen, the big eye, it fits many roles. So, like this one here, uh, Kevin Powell says there's a new Legend Diver at 36 millimeter. Boom, there you go. I don't know what the lug to lug is on the, the smaller Legend, but that would be killer too. Um, yes, this is the new Borealis Sintra. Wilson wants me to pronounce Freddie C in American accent. Frederic Constant. Is that close? Uh, Kevin S. says, congrats on the Borealis collaboration. Thank you very much. I will show you guys some pictures of that here soon. I'm charging my other device, but here are a couple of prototypes that Carlos sent over. And he, he went way fancier on the dials. Like the dials are like sparkly and stuff, and he's got the shark teeth. Wilson says, no, that, that Frederic Constant is not good enough. I guess that's, I mean, that's how you say it, so... Hope you have the uh, Random Rod Borealis to show. I do not, Mark, I do not have one in hand. That was a concept drawing that Carlos and I worked on. But yeah, just a great looking watch. Look how thin it is too. It's legit thin. Can we focus at all? Do we focus? Do we focus? We cannot focus. Okay, I'm trying to focus this thing, but... Yeah, and it definitely has Omega Aquaterra vibes, for sure. Nice liar lugs, nice polished. The uh, almost integrated into the case size is the the uh, the crown guards, but really thin, boxed dome sapphire crystal, really flat case back. Nice bracelet, pretty simple yet affordable. Red looks more on the brown side. Yeah, it's a, I don't know what you'd call that red. It's definitely a burgundy-ish red, maybe with a, some brown tones. Uh, Deaver Smith says, have I ever handled a Tudor Hydronaut? No, I have not. Burnt Sienna. Dried blood, there you go, Def. It looks like dry, <laughs> dried blood's a little bit darker than that. Or no, I mean, I'm assuming it is. So, like the the red on the M Force is um, a little more rich, I think, because it's it's more of a shimmer dial, whereas that one has like some texture to it. How's the loom? The loom on the Borealis will be good. The loom on the Borealis that is the Random Rob Edition one will be really good because I have uh, different indexes and a different sword handset. So, Jared's listening while he's at work. These M-Forces are actually really cool, and they're way thinner than I thought they would be. This is actually a really nice watch. Um, just ordered, is it a Corona Toki in the back? Uh, no, I'm not sure where you're looking. I don't, I don't recognize that brand name, so I don't, I don't think I have one of those. Uh, let's see, 143 people in the chat. So if, if anyone is interested, is that not charged? That's not charged enough. If you go over to Borealis's website right now, just do borealis.com or whatever, then you will find uh, the Sintra. And if you scroll, well, actually, it's sort of the top of the page. There is a limited edition model uh, that I worked in collaboration with Carlos, the owner, with on that uh, model. There's only 50 of them, guys. Well, excuse me. No, I don't, Mr. JJ, I don't have any ball watches here. I don't have any ball watches in the in the uh, shop at all. 
But that uh, Random Rob Edition Sintra, there's there's only going to be 50 of them. They're numbered, and there's I think there's only like 23 left. So what is the watch on the white strap? This is the, should I ever get the part number? Is it on the case bag? Should be somewhere. It's the ECBS 1000. ECBS 1000. It is a edifice line. You can get them in the non-limited edition ones, but this is the Honda Racing limited edition. Even says Honda Racing right on the dial, which is really cool. Sapphire crystal, uh, you know, tough solar, uh, all that good stuff. I don't know if it has, does it have multiband? I think you can sync it to your Bluetooth. Yeah, it has Bluetooth. I don't know if it has multiband. I don't think it does. But just a really cool, fun watch. And you have two different straps. Yeah, Championship White, 911 Dan. So it's, you know, Honda Championship White with the, like, Type R Red sort of thing. So couldn't resist. It was 350 bucks. I said, forget it. I'll just pick it up. So I picked that up at retail. And no regrets. Neff says he needs to find a sub 40 millimeter edifice or Oceanus. The Oceanus you're going to be able to find for sure. There might be some smaller edifice as well. I haven't really explored that line, to be honest with you. <laughs> NBD, still have the NSX? Question mark. No. Man, in hindsight, I should have really rebuilt that instead of parting it out. I parted that car out. Sean, yes, this is the Salmon Dial Mont Blanc Heritage. This is not a small watch. It's probably, uh, yeah, it's like 40 and a half millimeter and 48 lug to lug. So it would work for most wrist size. I think this would work even on a seven inch wrist, no problem. 911 Dan is wanting that. Um, I, I don't know what I'll do with this. I'm not sure what this watch is going to do. I, I've tried to wear it a couple days and then I just, I'm like, ah, eh, the white's a bit much. I couldn't do it, but I haven't tried the other. Uh, included strap uh, installed on this watch yet. So I suspect I probably will end up selling this, but it's it's hard to say right now. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with it yet. But it'll get offered in my Discord group first. So Yeah, Wilson, just wait a couple of weeks. So no, like legit, I probably will end up sending selling it, but but it's also it's going to get posted up in my Discord group for so somebody will probably pick it up there. Um, somebody asked if I like the crown guards on or off on the M Force. I haven't taken them off, but I have to say uh, I like the aesthetics it gives with them on. I'm assuming if you take them off, it also has the shroud just like this side does. Maybe not. So I will test it. But it's a cool looking watch. What is your favorite analog digital watch? Uh, my favorite analog digital watch. And my favorite Andy Digi, I've never owned one, but I would have to say my favorite is probably the Breitling Aerospace. I think that one's just the coolest, period. Uh, what is the watch lying flat next to the Submariner? Oh, good eye. So this is a, I guess, a micro brand. I forget the name of the brand, though. I wrote it down. This is the Type A2 Vincent uh, Speranza. It's a World War II vintage-inspired type watch. Uh, right there is the brand name. Can you guys read that? Procytus? Is that right? But check out that case back. It has like a... a an unfired bullet round pulled from the casing, like protruding from the case back. That's pretty wild. And it's actually, I mean, it protrudes up quite a bit. I'm assuming it'll still feel soft because it's nice and rounded on the wrist, but but it's like a battle of the bulge type watch. Is it uncomfortable to wear? I don't know. I've never worn it. Um, I can put it on real quick and and see. Kevin S., are you messing with me? Yeah, the case back is cool. I don't know. I'm putting it on wrist right now, and I don't I don't feel that case back at all. So I don't. 
So it's a it's a little bit smaller of a watch, but it's it's very like I said, it's World War II vintage inspired. So no, I don't I don't feel it at all. That little protrusion on the case back, I don't feel it at all. It feels totally fine. Yeah, Metal Slug, the salmon colored dial watch is the uh, Mont Blanc Heritage. Let's see if we can get this thing running. And this has like a cathedral handset on it. So, pretty fun watch. I did the, I think I recorded the unboxing. I still need to do the full video. It has a large crown on it as well. All right, I missed a bunch of comments. Where are we at? Should have used a live round on the case back. Okay. Uh, that's usually a good chance Kevin S is messing with you. That's pretty good. What watch is the salmon dial? Mont Blanc Heritage. Yeah, we covered that. I'm trying to read some comments. Uh, Floridian says, what color dial Borealis watch on the site? So my limited edition one is a white dial. Is this charged enough? Let me see if I can... Let me see if I can bring it up for you. Apparently there's no internet connection on this. I'm trying to load this on my other device. Okay, so if you go, I know this is pretty crude, guys, but if you go to the Borealis, just borealiswatch.com, after this loads, I'll put a link in the description. But if you go, so right at the beginning here, right at the top, you can pre-order this guy. It's it's $275 is 50% down. And then, so it's going to be, you know, 550. It's using the Miyota 9S, 90S5. Sorry, the phone went into warm tone. I don't know why. Uh, but this is the watch. It's got the sword hands. This is like a black chrome, so it'll have a nice contrast, but it'll also have a little bit of shine. It's going to have an orange seconds hand. It'll have a um, nice white, like BGW9 blue white loom. Uh, if we click on it, we can look at the case back. In the case back, we'll have the uh, Random Rob logo on there as well. So, like I said, there's only going to be 50 of them. And, like, right now, currently, there's only probably, like, 23 left. Yeah, low battery mode. I haven't used that. It's an old phone. I haven't used it in a long time, so I was trying to charge it. So I'll show it again later. Hey, Mr. LTE is checking in. What's the red dial to the right of the big eye? Uh, this one or this one? So there's the M Force and there's the Sintra. So the Sintra is what I was just kind of just showing. This is a new release. <laughs> Kevin says less than 50 now for sure, yeah. Um yeah, this, so this is the Sintra, this is the M-Force. Nice two-watch collection. Rob has a phone, no. Rob has a few phones, yeah. That's, not all of them work, though. I didn't size this one yet, but there's, there's what the Sintra looks like on wrist. It is going to have, with the factory bracelet, it is going to have an extended lug-to-lug. -lug. So, if... If you have a smaller wrist, you know, just ditch the bracelet and put a mesh on there or a leather strap or a NATO or a fabric strap or something like that. Uh, let's see. Todd wants to take a look at the SPB 207. I can do that. Let me, let me grab that. That's right here. It's not running currently. It's been a while since I've worn it. I absolutely love wearing this watch, though. This thing running again. What is today? The 22nd. So actually, I just need to fast forward a little bit. Yeah, Kevin, 100%. That watch looks nothing like an Aquaterra. I don't know why you, I don't know why you see that. Danny C says, Did you, Rob, did you see the Roman Sharp news? Uh, no, what's the news with Roman Sharp? I, I just watched his latest episode. I'm a huge fan of his channel. Let's see. Time about right. Oh, today's the 21st? Wow. 
Okie dokie. So I was wearing my Breitling with the wrong date on it. Anyway, that's the problem when you have too many watches, guys. You don't know what time it is. You don't know what day it is. Now, if you wear the Bling Master, you always know what time it is. Mine showing the Sintra buckle slash bracelet. It's it's basically the same bracelet they used on the Estrel. Oh, Danny C says uh, has a legal issue with some sunglasses or something. So, yeah, that's not good. Stuff like that happens though in that industry. You gotta you gotta get the whole story before you condemn a a, a place though. You know. Because they, they move a lot of stuff. Let's see. Come on, guys. 164 people viewing and only 24 thumbs up. Yeah, take a second. Jump off the live, of the comments and go maybe hit the thumbs up. I don't usually ask for that. I don't really care. But. Uh, Random Rad Borealis. What is the Bart bracelet clasp situation? It's it's this. It's this. It's this watch. But with my dial and hand configuration, this bracelet, kind of like a president style bracelet with air in between the links. And they, they all, you know, they're very flexible. They fold up. And then it has a standard, what you'd see on a lot of micro brand. Um, you just pop the clasp open and then flop that open. And you have four micro adjusts. Simple, no frills. Doesn't fail. Works every time. It's not my favorite class, but I I don't sometimes less is more, and that one's definitely less. So yeah, the subclasp is awesome. The uh, Pelly clasp is awesome. The Air King clasp is awesome. Did you guys watch the new Air King videos that have been posted today? Bobby Legs posted an Air King on uh, video on the YouTube's speculating on potential disc discontinuing of it, um, and then of course, uh, what is his name? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Ushin, I think is his name. Uh, Timeless Watch Channel. The Timeless Watch Channel did like a parody of the Watch Finder. Yeah, it's, everyone says Oshin, but I think it's Ushin. Um, I, I would, well, see, Neff, everyone says Oshin, but I, I remember when he was on a video with some other people, he said his name is, he, he like walked him through it and he's like, hey, what do you call those people that that help other people find their seat? And, the, and then they said Usher. And he goes, yes. So it's it's like Usher. So it's like Ushin. It's not Oshin, it's Ushin or something like that. I might be messing that up. but So anyway, yeah, he did a video with the Air King and... Um, Just epic, epic cool watch, and he was just making a parody of um, Watch Finder, so which is fun. I like that channel too. That's a big channel, but uh, yeah, the, Kevin, exactly. The Air King's been has been being discontinued since 2019. It came out in 2014, so it's on a six year run. I don't know. Maybe it's done. It's, we just never know, right? Rolex is like the master of not spilling the beans. So we won't know until, um, until they make their announcements. And if the Air King's not on the webpage anymore, then we'll all know. But I think the price increases, because not that long ago, like months ago, you could pick up on the secondary market, an Air King for just over retail, like a legit good deal. And now you go look at the prices and you're you're not getting one for like less than 10. And some of the prices are speculating up to like 14. So Neff says they, Rolex only needs to make one more watch his and it better have palm fronds on it, right? So that watch is actually growing on me. I don't I don't know if I can pull off a 36 mil, but that watch is pretty cool. Uh, 
yeah, Tom for watches says, yeah, any Rolex Steel Sports is going crazy in price. True, but like... So when you have a uh, a 124060, no date, 41 sub, whatever you want to call it, um, on the gray market, trending really close to the same price as gray market for the Air King. I mean, within a couple thousand dollars, that's that's pretty funny, I think, because traditionally the sub has always reigned supreme over a lot of these non-diver type watches, but it could easily surpass it. If the if the king, uh, if the air king, AK, whatever you want to call it, if it uh, gets discontinued from their lineup, you're gonna you're gonna see this watch, you know, dance with that twenty thousand dollar mark, like it, that's legit. Like if it's already speculating and pushing fourteen thousand, as soon as that is removed from the catalog, you're looking to see eighteen to twenty two thousand dollar prices right in there, which is just ridiculous. It's crazy. But it'll happen. Calico says there's $50,000 tape. Uh, there's not quite that much on the table. Then Rob is selling. Uh, Mark, no, I, I won't sell it. I mean, I kind of have a number in my head, but it would have to be ridiculous. And the only reason I put that number in my head is because I don't think it'll ever really meet it. So Let's see. The Shane says, hey, Rob, any good field watches with a screw-down crown you'd recommend? I love my khaki field, but the lack of screw-down crown. Look at Swiss Watch Company USA. I absolutely love what they're doing right now. Swiss Swiss Watch Company USA. So SWC USA. Go check them out. I, I absolutely love what they're doing. There's also a new release from Formax, and I think that's on the affordable side of things. Kevin S. says, check out Serica. A uh, little bit smaller watch there, I think, are those Seracas. But, yeah, I'm a big fan of um, screw-down crowns as well. So, yeah, enough. The the Bunker, they have another really cool watch about to release, and I think they share it on their website. But I'm Trying to read some comments. Bunker on the bracelet is amazing. I have not tried a Bunker on the bracelet yet. Um, I'm not sure about the Formex with the diving trip. Rob was wondering how the fixed link on the metal squares brings the lug to lug. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I know people with smaller wrists that don't really have an issue with them. So, like, you can get hung up on this number right here, right? Like it's, you know, 61 and a half millimeter, but it's not a realistic thing to just take that measurement because they do turn down. Like your wrist isn't, most people's wrist isn't like just completely flat. I mean, your wrist turns, you know. So when you put one of these on, and my wrist is actually closer to seven and an eighth inch, you can see it just follows the contour of your wrist. So I don't know what the smallest size wrist you could go with, and still wear this comfortably. I don't have my combi square down here. I think it's in my work van. But I'm going to actually wear this watch tomorrow. So if you have a nice digital watch tomorrow, maybe wear it. Because it's going to be 222 and then we can do 222. You know, we can, we can have some fun with that stuff. You got some sun today? No, I just, I don't know what I am, dried, like red. Kevin checking in from West Palm Beach. Uh, Kevin S. says, have you seen the Uncle Seiko Jubilee bracelet for the Tudor Black Bay 41 GMT? Uh, yeah, I did a video on it already. I already posted, like, video. Kevin S. You don't watch my videos, Kevin S? Like, I already have a video of that exact watch with that bracelet. Kevin S. Calling you out, Kevin S. You don't watch my videos? Come on, man. Uh, let's see. Jacob says his hands are all red and mad all winter. Mine too, I think. 
Uh, let's see. Rob, have you ever checked out any Fortis stuff? I think so. Where is the Ocean Rover? Um, let's see. I showed the Ocean Rover last week. It's right here, but it's it's going to get shipped away soon. Kevin S. says he, he watches my videos, but it's hard to keep up. Man, this is such a good-looking watch. I love the sword hands. Where is the new orange Super Ocean? Matthew, I'm actually kind of missing it, but I loaned it out to my buddy Craig, who may or may not be in the chat. This is Craig's watch. So I need to bust out the video on this watch. I wore it like a day or two. Awesome watch. Uh, I'm going to bust out the video on this watch this week, and then I'm going to get this watch back to him and get my uh, orange Super Ocean back. Um, so, yeah, it's out on loan. Occasionally I'll loan out my watches to my close friends. Kevin, yeah, so yeah, I, I do crank out a lot of videos, usually two a day. Not enough wet watches on the table. Uh, let's see, Floridian asked a question. What is the refreshment? I am drinking, I'm almost, it's almost gone now. I only have like a little bit left. It's uh, Monkey Shoulder. Jacob says he would like to... <sighs> He's curious to hear about where your line is on homage, homage watches. How's the loom on the Genoa? The loom on the Genoa is awesome. I don't know that I really have a line on homage. I think as long as it's, yeah, uh, Monkey Shoulder is a great affordable blend. It's a little, it's a little punchy in the mouth a little bit in the beginning but once you have a few drinks in you i think it's okay um so like and i know a lot of people's line is way crossed when it comes to this you know because of the how similar it is but yet i can see the differences like the lugs are different you know you're never going to see this combination uh it's a smaller watch you know there's a lot of similarities but in the in the same case that there's a lot of similarities with like a squale or like a steinhardt or a, a bunch of other watches out there and they all have their place in the market. Most people are never going to own a Submariner uh, for whatever your reason. But the Genoa, honestly, is the best homage to the Submariner. So I, I don't have a problem with homage watches. Do you feel the fairer watches are worth the prices they charge? They must be because people buy them. I guess that's my like most political answer. Going to crack into some Bushmills. Any thoughts on Nevada Depthmaster? I'm not familiar with that one. Still doing Brightwing Select. Oh, okay, so um, I'm not keeping up with the comments, guys. So, but somebody asked about the Brightwing Select program. I don't think I'm going to re up. I am. Technically, I think I'm done with it. I may have made the last payment. I'm not sure, but it lowered the price on the my price on the Avenger now is like in the fifteen hundred dollar range. So, uh, MM10, I do have your I do have your pointer date. It's not on the table. It's it's behind me somewhere. So now with the Brightling Select program, the Avenger price is like fifteen fifty or something like that. So I, I obviously have to buy it at that price. That's a ridiculous price, right? So uh, I will be picking this up soon. I just don't know where I'm going to get the money, but I'll figure it out. And then, yeah, I don't think I'm going to re-up. Uh, Zach is asking about my thoughts on the new Longines Legend Diver colors. I have not checked them out. I'll have to check them out. What is the light blue and purplish watch in the back center? Um... I don't know if you're talking about this one or this one. This is a, an Orient Star Diver that Pablo sent in. Awesome watch. Nice 120-click bezel. Has a power reserve indicator. Uh, Will Carey's asking if there's any G-Shocks on the horizon. You know what I've been finding, Will, is I'm really warming up to the GA2100s and the GM2100s. 
Uh, Mr. LTE, a.k.a. Manny, is asking, what is the... So the condition of the Breitling Select watches are brand new. They are technically refurbished watches, whatever refurbished meant to Breitling. But when they, every time they've arrived to me, they looked brand new. There was no problems with the strap. There was no problems with the watch. There's no scratches. They looked absolutely perfect. Interesting handset on this one too. Pretty fun watch. Uh, John Page checking in. Hey Rob, looking into Manta. How would the quality compare to my Black Bay 58 movement excluded and since I can't get my physical hands on a Manta? So if you're if you're anywhere close, so Worn and Wound is is doing the wind up shows and they're doing three of them. They're doing one in San Francisco, Chicago, and New York. So if you're within any sort of remote proximity to those, I would say check them out. I think Monta even has like a loaning program or something, don't they? You might want to reach out to the guys at Monta. I swore they those guys had some sort of loaning program they were doing. I think you can get your hands on a Monta. Uh, definitely if you go to one of the Worn and Wound wind up shows. The, the quality and the feel of their watch and their brand is awesome. But I don't know what they're using for movement now. I think they're using a regulated Salida. I think they have to. Uh, okay, yeah, Nate Dog just said, uh, Monta has a trial program. Email them, 300 totally refunded. Did it last month. Awesome. Nate Dog, testimonial right there. I thought I remember reading that somewhere, so... Definitely try one out. They're accommodating people because they know they can't check it out. Um, Kleiner Hund with a $5 hair super chat says, Longtime listener, first time caller, looking for advice. Price aside, Omega Aquaterra or Pelly? Or are they too big for a six and three quarter inch wrist? Um, I think you're, both those, I think would work on your wrist. Um, Trying to recall. The the Pelly's gonna present larger. I mean the Aquaterra actually kind of presents kind of big too, really. I had that white dial one on the rubber and it worked really good. My wrist is like probably seven and the eighth, yours is like six and the three quarter. If you go back and watch probably one of the better videos out there, if you go watch for the Pelly, I'd go watch the Bark and Jack video he did, because his wrist is a little bit smaller. He might be six and three quarter, and he absolutely loved the Pelly. For one thing, the bracelet tapers down, so you've got no extending of the lug to lug, and you have a nice taper on it. I'm not a huge fan of the, um, the, the bracelet is good on the Aquaterra, but I don't like the butterfly clasp. Brian just chimed in. He has, he has just over a six and a half inch wrist, and he has the 41 millimeter Aquaterra. Works great, he says. So I think you could go either one. It would be nice if you could go try them both, though, because depending on how your wrist shape is as well is going to potentially play into that. Yeah, see, a lot of these guys are chiming in. They have, like, close to six and a half to six and three quarter inch wrists, and they're wearing, like, the... Again, if you can find a watch that the bracelet drops off right away, and if you're a bracelet guy, that is going to be critical, I think. Because, yes, you might have the 50 millimeter lug to lug, but as long as that bracelet drops off right away, like the Super Ocean does and like the Pelly does, I can't remember if the bracelet on the Aquaterra does. I suspect it might not. Hey, Joe and the Badger's here. Thanks for checking in. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Black Bay 58 works really good. The Pelly is lighter, yes, for sure. The movement in the Aquaterra is awesome, though, because the way it you have the jump hour on it is just really cool. It's slick. Yeah, if, and also, if you haven't looked, yeah, Jacob. Actually, Jacob, that's a good point, too. Uh, the Manta divers and the non-divers, maybe give them a look, too, because their bracelet does not extend the lug to lug either. They they uh, drop right off. They're very good, so. Hmm. 
Interesting. Oh, wow, you guys jumped on him. You know what? I clicked on him. Guys, listen, I clicked on that art guy, and he's already hidden from the channel, so I don't know how he can even comment. I never understand YouTube when it does this stuff. Michael, Desire68, chiming in. I appreciate it. Where's Dane? Dane has been busy taking care of his pops, so hopefully, uh, you know, they're doing, they're doing good, hopefully. Is the Avenger bigger than the Steel Big Eye? Is the Avenger... I think it might be... Yeah, it's definitely bigger. Uh, lug to lug is longer. The width is longer. The Lung Gene Big Eye, the Avigation Big Eye, is just is such a killer watch. Uh, let's see. Reed says, uh, Blue Willard or Doxa Sub 300 for a cushion case diver around 1500 I don't... Can you get a... Doxa sub 300 for 1500 bucks? I don't know if you can. Bean Boy says the Invicta 1953 bracelet drops right off too. It, it definitely does. Uh, what happened to the Hamilton Panda Chrono? I don't know. It's been a long time since I had one of those. Where's your, what is your opinion about the Longines Hydro Conquest with rubber strap? Great watch. I like them. I don't own one, but... Um, I prefer Seiko over Doxa all day. Kevin S says Seiko over Doxa. Jacob says you can get the 300T for around 1600 bucks. It's not bad. The six, I mean, the 300T is pretty sweet. It's a, it's a pretty sweet watch for sure. Is there a bracelet available for that big eye? Mm, no. You'd have to go aftermarket or something. There's, I don't know. It belongs on strap, though. I don't think you would want to put it on bracelet. For some reason, I just don't see it. Cowboy Swami, $5 super chat. Thank you very much. Says his Tudor 1926. Seems like no AR on it. Is it like that with all Tudor? Kind of disappointing. Hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think, I think. Oh, most of the Tudor have glare. I think the Peli has AR coating on it. It must. Maybe not. It's a matte dial, so I think the matte dial helps. But I'm not 100% sure which models have AR coating. I know my, my new sub actually has AR coating on the underside, which is shocking. A lot of people don't really talk about it. Bree says, Big Eye or Hamilton Auto Chrono? I'd go Big Eye. I did go Big Eye. I mean, look, I own the Big Eye. Tom for watches, $5 super chat. Is the dial on your random rod borealis inspired by the vintage Omega Seamaster you like? Forget the Omega reference. Uh, yes. Um, there's a lot of Omega play. I mean, there's a lot of Omega play in the watch to begin with, right? With the liar lugs and everything. But basically you have like an Aqua Terra style case. And then my version of the watch is going to have sword hands from like either the older Seamaster 300 um, or... Yeah, I mean, basically, the, that's what the sword hand reference is from. And then the dial layout could actually be taken from the older 300 or from, like, a more uh, recent Planet Ocean version, which at some point I am going to pick up a Planet Ocean 42 millimeter. Neff says he is positive his Black Bay 36 has no AR coating. Thankfully, he doesn't want it. Over 200 in the chair. Oh, wow, we did go. We spiked up a little bit, didn't we? That's pretty cool. Pretty good turnout. Uh, Desire68 is asking, Hamilton Navy Khaki Frogman. Thoughts? Uh, I don't know. I just can't get into Hamilton as a, as a dive style watch for some reason. I don't know why. I think Hamilton, I think of like, you know, aviation. There's some aviation style watches or mostly field watches. That's just what I think of when I think Hamilton. If I'm going to go for a diver, Hamilton is not the first name that comes out of my mouth for sure. So, uh, Neff says he's heard bad things about Doxa Loom and service. That's my only hesitation, or I might pick up a 600T. So, the, the Loom that I've seen on most uh, Doxas has been subpar, 100%, and I've seen quite a few of them. Uh, loom on Seiko is amazing, obviously. We all, we all know that. That's no secret. 
servicing a Seiko. Um, if you're going to send it into Seiko, it actually kind of sucks. I experienced that with my quartz tuna, but you can get your Seiko serviced uh, many other places, like quicker and probably cheaper. Uh, the same thing for Doxa. You could get Doxas worked on, whether it has the, the older ones have ETAs in them. The newer ones are going to have Salitas in them. Uh, you can get those worked on for a watchmaker. You don't have to send them in the Doxa. I'm in reviews checking in. Good to see you here. Jacob says he decided to go Orange, Orient Ray 2, and Aquastar Deep Star 2 to check my Orange and Vintage Diver. Awesome. Not a whole lot of talk on the Aquastar lineup of watches. Um, what was that other brand? Oh, um, shoot. Do I still have it here? Yeah, I put it away. But the Synchron, so the same company that owns Synchron owns that Aquastar. Great brands. I would pick... Aquastar or Synchron over Doxa, to be honest with you. Let's see. GSTB 400 rubber strap thoughts. GSTB 400, GSTB 400. Which one is that? I can't remember which one the GSTB 400 is. Let's see here. Do you have any opinions on... Any of the ball pre-order watches like the Roadmaster Challenger or the Hurricane Hunter. So YZ, if you're going to pick up a ball watch, definitely either pick them up on the pre-order because they're actually way cheaper than when they go to the full catalog or wait for to try to find a used one. Ball watches do take a pretty good hit on the secondary market, but they are amazing watches for sure. Um, let see. Necromancer, I'm not sure what the Longines Master Collection reference L2793873 is. I don't have a computer in front of me to look it up. Mike Moody just picked up his first Islander watch from Long Island Watch and love it. Of course, I had to go with the Orange Monster Homage. That's cool. Good watches. Crazy affordable. AZ Taz fan with the $5 here super chat. One of my biggest gripes is reviewers complaining of lug to lugs over 55 millimeter while not considering the actual inner lug-to-lug, -lug, which actually hugs the wrist. That's a hard measurement to, to uh, grab. I know what you're saying. Because often, you're right. So the known quantity that we all measure is this number here, right? But, well, this is a bad example. This one's pretty flat. But the reality is, is what's really on your wrist is like a little bit less. So I, I understand what you're saying. Um, this is the sub a bad example because most watches like curve down a little bit. So like if you used this one where it curves down, yes, sure, the lug to lug is actually really what you know like fifty two and a half millimeter, but the reality is where it actually contacts your wrist is you know a lot less. You know like forty six, forty seven. It's not bad at all. Like I don't typically go after. I can with my wrist size. I don't typically do 52 millimeter lug to lug watches, but if I put this Longines on, you have a very good point. Then you will see that that 52 millimeter lug with really doesn't matter that much. Hey, big bearded vipers chiming in. You can see how it just curves and hugs the wrist. The other really good example of that would be the Glycine line of watches. Most of the combat subs, 42 millimeter, crazy long lug to lug but they curve really good. So they just hug the wrist. So it becomes, a, Hamilton does it too. Most field watches do it in fact. And we all get hung up on that. You know, they're like, ah, it's like 52 millimeter lug to lug. I can't do that. Eh, you might want to go try one on because you could probably actually wear it. Kevin says when you have a six and a quarter inch wrist, yeah, that, that becomes an issue for sure. Neff is waiting for that 39 millimeter combat sub. Uh, hopefully when that comes out, I'll get one too. Wet Watches says there's a 20 minute warning. I'm not sure what chat he is on, but I have like closer to a five minute warning. Thank you. Uh, Craig G also, yeah, also depends on where the, the lug holes are because that's where the strap actually starts to transition and that's short, that's shy of the lug to lug. I'm not sure how to factor that in. That's a tough one to factor in 
when I'm doing the uh, videos. How about the, uh, Michael says, how about the Citizen Promaster Aqualand Robin, if you know that model? Thoughts? Um, well, there's there's quite a few Aqualands. I, I have a couple of, that's, I don't, that's a Promaster. I don't think I have any Aqualands here. Uh, must be wet and not telly. Wrist shape makes a big difference. Yeah, Arthur, good point. Wrist shape does play a big role as well. His brother and, and him both have seven inch wrist. My wrist is flat overall and his brother's is rounder. I think, you, you, unfortunately, you, you got to try watches on. It's, it's a bummer because, you know, a lot of us in the community and even why I started the channel is to show these on picture and video so people can have another source of information to decide if they want to, you know, spend the money that a lot of these watches cost. But you, you have to try them on. It's unfortunate whether you buy it or can find a buddy or an AD or something. CFZ is saying, hey, Rob, what is your most worn watch lately? So I've been cycling through pretty heavy. But really, I've been wearing, mostly I've been wearing like, well, I think I could actually answer that pretty easy. The most watch worn lately has straight up been the um, the titanium big eye. I've been wearing this thing way more than I thought I would. So, probably like, I don't keep track of it, but I've been cycling through a lot of the other watches but the big eye lands on wrist a lot. AZ Taz fan, $5 hair super chat says, correct. Curved down lugs are important. My wrist is 62 millimeter across. Measure your wrist before deciding. So yeah, so for the people that want to spend the time and really calculate that out, you could probably actually, those are known quantities. Your wrist isn't going to change a whole lot. You could probably get some of those dimensions. You could you know, try on a few watches that you already have or buddies have, and then you can start to calculate out what's really going to work. What is my problem with Grand Seiko? I don't have a problem with Grand, Grand Seiko. Why does everyone think I have a problem with Grand Seiko? Grand Seiko is great. They're always in the, the showroom. They're always available. Um, they're super easy to get. They always have tons of them because there's, you know, there's no... Uh, Well, that didn't work. Yeah. And then Grand Seiko, yeah, they're great to buy used because when you do find them used, they're they're way cheaper than they are new. So, yeah, Grand Seiko is awesome. Yeah, Grand Seiko finishing is so good and sharp. It, it scratches really easy and all that good stuff. I mean, all watches scratch pretty easy. Bought a Grand Seiko spring drive for my first nice watch and love it. Yeah. I think most people that buy Grand Seiko absolutely love them. I mean, most people that buy boats when they first get them absolutely love them too. Uh, so what are you supposed to take calipers to your AD? The best thing to do is try it on. Also, you will never find inner lug measurements on manufacturers' websites. You won't. You're right. Oh yeah, big bearded viper. Here we go, here we go, guys. Seriously, all these small wrist guys complaints. You got big bearded viper rolling in with an eight inch wrist, would trade anybody for a seven inch wrist. Um, there are some 36, 38 millimeters on his radar. The same problem exists at either end of the spectrum. Um, I got big bearded viper and Craig and uh, a few other people in my chat. They struggle with watch straps, right? Like. That's their big thing. Yes, there's a ton of big watches to choose from, but none of the straps land right on their wrist. So there's there's problems on both ends of the spectrum. So, and then you got that sweet spot in between, probably from like, I don't know, where would you guys think the sweet spot of wrist size would be? Probably from like six and three quarter inch wrist all the way up to like maybe seven and a half, I think is probably that where like most watches are going to work.
Uh, not calling anyone out, but there's another reviewer that has issues with Grand Seiko. I don't know who that is, but I don't have issues with Grand Seiko. Great watch. I'm never going to buy one, but uh, let's see. Every tutor I've purchased, I've had to order one or two more links. Seven and a half is perfect. Design, Jason from Design is at six and a quarter. A lot of YouTube review uh, watch channels have smaller wrists. I was just talking to uh, a buddy about that. Turek says seven and a quarter is perfect. Need a quarter more. Yeah. All right, so we're over 60. It's Monday. I'm already tired. I have to pick a watch for... Oh, no, I'm going to I'm gonna wear the uh, Bling Master. I haven't worn this in a while tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be this watch because there's going to be a bunch of twos on the screen. So, right? I'm going to wear this one. David rolling in with an eight and a half inch wrist. That's, a, that's the same size wrist that my brother-in-law has. And it's, it's, it's not easy to find watch straps, that's for sure. All right, guys, let's kill the lights. Check the loom. And then after this video loads, if you're watching this later, I will put a link in the description. Go to Borealis if you want to pick up my Random Rob limited edition. There's only 50 made, period. Not going to do any more. There's only probably like, at the time of this recording, there's probably only like 20. Cowboy Swami with a $5 here, super chat. Late says, thoughts on Zinn and Damasco having hard to scratch cases, but can scratch the air coating on top of the crystal. That's why I got rid of my Damasco. I, at one point, you could special order those with no AR coating on the top of the crystal. There are methods to, like, remove the AR coating on the top. I've seen Omega guys do it and maybe even Brightling guys do it. But, yeah, it seems it seems kind of, like, silly to do such hard anti-scratch uh, metal for the case, but then the AR coating can get scratched. My Brightlings are going to get scratched on the AR coating. I know it. And if I ever get a Omega again, I'm sure that the top AR coating is going to get scratched. You know, I can either go through the process and remove the AR coating or put a new crystal on. But yeah, when you're buying a watch that's supposed to be tough and you're probably buying it because you need it to be tough, then yeah, that sucks because the AR coating is definitely going to get scratched and it's going to suck. It's in your face. Uh, let's see, AZ Taz says, uh, $5 hair super chat says, one of my favorite pieces is the Cartier tank worn by Cary Grant, but too small for me. Cartier has some awesome watches. I hope to check out that brand soon. Um, it's not a brand I think that I would end up wearing, but I'm holding my reservation on that uh, because I think the watch probably feels way different than it looks. All right, let me kill the lights. You guys can check the loom and then I'm out of here. I definitely got to show you the... Um, the loom on here. So of course we have, we got the Peli. Um, I already, that's the Rolex with the blue loom. You got, check out the loom on the, the Tuna is overpowered, is ridiculously bright. One of the brightest watches out there, period. The Orient Star does really good and the Orient M-Force does really good as well. Uh, probably brighter than the Seiko, honestly, but similar company, so they're probably pulling from the same batch of loom. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next vid.